What's up guys, Caleb here, Caleb's Property Maintenance, and thank you for coming back for another video. I know it's been a very long time since you heard from me, but today I am actually not anywhere near home. In fact, I'm in Colorado. That's right guys, Colorado. Fort Collins, Colorado is where we are, and as you can see here behind me, we are at Walker Manufacturing. We are at the place where they make the Walker mower. I am so excited guys to get a tour of the factory today. It's gonna to be so awesome. So without further ado, let's go inside and let's check it out. So come on with me. A celebration for us and we made commemorative uh, commemorative model that uh, is a little different uh, the main difference is we painted the whole thing or finished the whole thing in, in metallic gray instead of yellow mm -hmm. for the top part and we had uh, we offered these uh, for sale uh, as, as you could order them ahead of time so that we built exactly how many people ordered it, which was 235 machines okay. and uh, this is the first of a series then of 235 that that we built. Um, so if people ask, you know, well, that's a little bit about what this, and we're at, we're at about 175,000 now, so I suppose, I mean, our plan would typically be if when we get to 200,000, we'll probably put in the 200,000 machine instead of the 150,000. Uh, we typically have had a, a celebration where we, we call it family reunion, which means we invite all of our customers, our employees, our suppliers, our distributors and dealers all to come and celebrate with us. Uh, and so when we have, like this, uh, when we did this machine uh, in 2018, we had about uh, 2,500 people come here uh, on, on a Friday and a Saturday uh, to, to celebrate with us. And, uh, so it was, a, it was a lot of fun. We'll probably do that again at 200,000. Wow. Anyway, let's uh, let's head out in the plant, and uh, we'll start looking at how we make these machines. <laughs> Okay, the, this, uh, the, flow, the flow of the material here and uh, the, the manufacturing process, really this tour is designed to kind of follow the process from beginning to end. Okay. So the beginning is right at that door down there, and let's just walk down that way. where we bring steel in. And you can see bundles of steel here of different types. Almost every day we have trucks that will come in from distributors, uh, steel distributors, that bring steel to us that we need to make the parts for the machines. They, they usually come in lengths of about 20 feet. So we take them uh, and bring them over here to th these three machines and cut them to the proper length. Uh, those two lighter colored machines are, are automatic saws, uh, band saws, that will come down and make a very nice saw cut on a piece of material. The green machine here with the orange is a, an iron worker, which has a, a shear like a pair, a pair of scissors for, uh, that will cut steel. Uh, and so if, it's not quite as nice a cut as a saw cut, but for a lot of the parts, it's very, it's a, still very, a very good cut. Uh, the, so anyway, that's what happens that begins the process right here. Now we'll walk this way. Here. how the cut is. It's already got a couple of holes, well, actually three holes punched in it and a notch on it. So, yep. yeah. We cut up uh, all told about 15,000 pounds of steel per day really? to make 
the parts that go into make up a machine. Mm -hmm. We're making right right now. We're running right at 28 machines a day. So that's how it you know, how we come up. With it. So that's quite a bit of steel. That's yeah. Steel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is our oldest tool. My dad bought this from uh, in Wichita, Kansas. It's World War II surplus hydraulic press. Wow. We still use it uh, to flatten material and do some bending, uh, bending some parts with it. It used to be a hand pump hydraulic press. We put an electric motor on it years ago, so it's it's uh, but you know, very very. That's our oldest tool anyway. <laughs> so next up, right behind you is our our new laser cutting system. We just put this in last summer and on into the winter. We uh, finally, it's all up and operate, fully operational, but it features a, a, a metal storage system and material handling system, automated, plus two laser cutting machines. Uh, this is our third generation machine. That is, we've had two other earlier style machines that do this kind of work, but this is the, this is the latest, uh, latest design. Um, Come this way. You've got two uh, two towers. These this tower and the one right next to it store uh, sheets of metal of different thicknesses. All the way we use a lot of 11 gauge, uh, which is about eighth of an inch, and then a quarter inch. We use even some 16 gauge, a little bit lighter. Anyway, you got stacks of metal in here, and there's an elevator that runs up and down that comes into the tower and goes up and down and, and pulls off sh skids of metal and then brings them down and puts them on to, or, or actually runs them down to the there, to the cutting machine. The machine down there, uh -huh. yeah. These two towers have the capacity to hold about 140,000 pounds of steel. So uh, it, there's a lot of, yeah. We had to actually put a new floor in to, be, to support the weight. Anyway, wow. uh, we'll go, we'll kind of walk around this machine uh, so you can kind of see what the different parts of it. The metal skids of metal that come to us from the, our, from the warehouse, we take those and load them into the, into the machine. This machine is able to run unattended at nighttime, so we, we run it during the day, but we also, it'll, it'll be cutting parts all, all, all night, night long. long. Yeah. Here, this this one and one next door are the same. This one's not working right now, but we'll go right next door and, and see the see what it looks like. You're just starting a. Oh no, it's cutting. Yeah. It, oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Now, it's a, what you're seeing there is a is a laser. It's a light beam. Yeah. It's, it's about the size of a human hair, and it's got 10,000 watts of power. So it's, every time it sparks, it's actually piercing steel. See the little spark yep. come out? And then and then once it pierces, it moves and cuts. And uh, nothing's wasted. We need to... Let's see here. Now you can see on the screen here, right there, where the red... Yeah, that's where, that's, that's that's where it's working, yeah. This is the whole sheet. This is the whole sheet. This has been nested, so you've got a couple big deck plates in here, yep. and then you've got all these other parts have been, and that's an automatic nesting program. That is a uh, computer program that the operator tells them, okay, I want to cut this many parts, uh, and this is the part I want you to cut, and the machine will automatically go to work and arrange these on the sheet for the best utilization of the sheet. Minimum, minimal scrap. Wow. And, uh, yeah, there's not much wasted there. <laughs> we typically run about 75, well, 25 percent waste and 75 percent good to make the, you know, that goes into the part. Yeah. 
Right. Sometimes we do a little better than that, and sometimes not so good. Yeah. Because every hole that goes in there count actually counts as waste, even though it's just a little plug. Right. Little yeah. Plug yep. Out of the hole. Anyway, it makes me smile every every time I think about how long it used to take us to make parts the old way. Oh, yeah. This is uh. This thing can cut out something in a hurry. Oh, it can. Yeah. We'll go right around here now. So you've got a this screen right here with the green bars um, is is a, a calculated number off our bills of materials that, that for every part that we need to build a machine there's a bill of materials that shows us and this our system now will go in and show us which part do we need to cut next and how many do we need to cut and then, and so the operator will take that information and go over here and bring in the drawing. Uh, the, uh, the CAD drawing, uh, bring it up on the screen and begin to build a, jaw, a sheet of, of parts that, that we need. Mm -hmm. So we per there, no, no, there's no standard job. Everything is custom to basically pro programmed. Uh, we have standard drawings, but once we begin to make up a job, it can uh, each one is different. Yeah. So here's an example of a job sheet uh, that's been put together with two parts. You can see it. And uh, the time to cut that is going to be 24 minutes. Um, uh, number of parts, 160, 161 parts. Um, here's another that has three parts on it. You yeah. can see. See how it got arranged onto the sheet? Yeah. Yep. This has 558 parts, and it's going to take 54 minutes to cut. <laughs> An hour to cut it. But look at all the parts you get. Well, well yeah. Uh, Awesome. Yeah, you and lift the sheet oh, out here. This so is this is again unloaded by the robot. Oh, okay. So we have a robot. Oh, he's taking the part yeah. and putting it down here he's on the stack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, so, yeah, the, <laughs> that's the decking. That's the decking. Yeah, yeah. Couple of the decks. Yeah, yeah. those yeah. big deck plates. That's how those. It's not going to do the small parts. It'll just do the big, bigger parts. Pretty interesting. Wow. Oh, this is a bending machine. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a brand Whoa. new a brand new little bending uh, a robot for bending. Oh. Uh, yeah. So you, that's, that's the part. Yeah, there's the part. Finish. So you can see this would have been whoops. This would have been cut out on the laser machine as a flat flat part stack. And then the robot comes along and picks it up and. It moves so much faster. So much faster. So much faster than a human. Part's done. Okay, there it comes. Done. Beautiful. That position sit right there, so it's exactly. Oh, okay. It's less loose when it's being bent, and then it grabs it again. Our point is to see if this part comes out. It just it it. Uh, I'm not sure late. about that, but yeah, I think it's programmed to show you where the piles are at. Uh, okay. Yeah, with it, and then that's it. This is it brings over here to get it in exactly the right position. So these are not that precise, you know. They're sure. just stacked a little bit. With yeah. So how so, do they get stacked in there? That I don't. I don't. I have seen that. We'll have this, to stack them. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, we start out with. This, this material in a box like this, so somehow it, uh, that's something I, yeah, I, I need to learn that to, to get a better, better tour. For, uh, yeah. Hi, Paula. The new building is on out there at 2002, so we're in the middle, what we call the middle building. There's three things happening in this building. This first, this whole side of the building 
over to this side is all purchased parts. Even though we make a lot of the machine, we still buy a lot. You know, things like engines, gearboxes, transmissions, USC, all those kinds of things are purchased and stored here to support the assembly of the finished machine. Mm -hmm. So that's what you see over here. We have one person that keeps track of this warehouse. Uh, wow. Yeah, and he, he's, he's a long time guy. He's done a great job uh, of doing the technical warehouse shape up. Yeah. This is the plastics department, which we don't mold the, the grass catchers or the plastic parts are molded in Wisconsin. Uh, molded, and it's uh, it's using the rot rotational molding process, which is uh, an aluminum cavity that opens up, and you pour in resin powder, polyethylene resin mm -hmm. powder, close it up, put it in an oven, and tumble it for about 20 minutes, and the and the plastic uh, uh, melts into a coating. Yep. Coats the whole inside of the mold, then you cool it down, open it up, and out pops up one point. of these parts. Yep. And uh, so that's how the parts are made. We go to work and take the parts out of the boxes and drill a bunch of holes in them to, to, for the, the parts that need to be molded on. Yep. Then we go to the workbench over here to see a couple guys working yep. at this work. Assembly work. Yeah. Yeah. That, that. This thing is your alarm. That's your alarm. Yeah. Yep. And that's the little motor here that oscillates the oscillates, oscillates the spout back and back forth. And forth. Uh -huh. Yep. And, uh, and then you can put the screen. The exhaust screen and yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and then of course the back door has to go on too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Anyway, that's all done here. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's the rest of the We got Tom here. Hey, hey. He's <laughs> tagging along. So this is the final assembly position for the for the power unit, the tractor. Uh, He's doing what one thing we do with every machine is when we but when we were done with it we start the engine up and run the machine while it's still up on the stand and check everything over to make sure it's working. We have a checklist that we follow to make sure everything's working properly and also the, it is adjusted. So he, they, they, they want to adjust the machine so the wheels are turning the same so the machine goes straight. Uh, and uh, we also check the clutch and brake on the blade drive uh, to make sure that's working yeah. properly. Uh, anyway, that's, that completes the machine uh, tractor. Uh, this is where the shipping takes place. Um, we have th three dock doors. Yeah, nobody here right now, but uh, what we do is stage loads right alongside each one of these lines, there's mm -hmm. this floor space. We use that to, to bring our machines and park them so that when the truck hits the dock, uh, we're ready to load. Ready to load. And, and of course, there's usually an or, a parts order and, a, and some more decks that go with that order. But a typical load, uh, well, first of all, we don't crate most of the machines hold, that go out here in the U.S. The, the power unit is not crated. We just simply drive them in the truck and strap them down. Okay. Uh, the more decks are put in boxes, but the tractors are not. Um, and anyway, a typical load is 16 machines on one layer in a trailer, uh, over, over the road trailer, or double a double deck, which a lot of our shipments are double decked at 32 machines mm -hmm. per, per trailer load. And uh, so that, uh, yeah. And if it's going overseas, though, uh, the containers don't have two floors in them, ocean-bound containers. So then, then we do create our tractors. Now, how many guys do you have that are just maintenance that will fix the equipment in here that if it breaks down? The manufacturing equipment? Yes. We have one one maintenance man that's kind of a solo guy, uh, the, and another guy that can help him. That, mm. that, uh, that's that, it. That, yeah, that's it. So. And we also have some outside, some of the equipment is supported by outside right, uh, yeah. people, uh, some of the, like the laser cutting machine. Right. Right. We have some basic maintenance we can do on that machine, and we've, we've had the training on how to, how yeah, to right. do routine. Right. But if there's something out of the out of the ordinary, then we would have a contract to have somebody come and in, you know, support, work on the machine. Yeah, because you've got to have it running. You can't have it sitting. Absolutely right. No way. So, so you're right there. I mean, there's, and then there's just general maintenance yeah. here, which we, yeah. uh, we do uh, this one guy he he's he's pretty uh, hand, a, a good handyman in terms of he can work in electrical uh, air pressurized air hydraulics you know whatever he needs to be working on so.
Yeah.